any surgery? Um, I talked to him one time and he was, it, everything went very well. He was uh, getting his therapy. And, good. Um, are you helping with taking? No, they don't need me. I just, he says they got it all lined up. So oh, good. I told him if, if something happened, I'll try to uh -huh. in for somebody. Okay. How's Teresa feeling? She was in bed the last time I talked to her. So, she so she's probably not helping him. You know. So what's happening with Ann? Oh, everything turned out real good, Mary. Uh, she was in a hospital and uh, they decided to go through the groin like they do and go and look at the heart. And there was some, uh, I don't know if you call them arteries or veins or what you call them, that were really closing up. So they bought, they were in there, they go ahead and open, you know, and now she's doing better. She's done in a long time. Did they put stents in there? They didn't put no stents. I, th I didn't hear nothing about a stent. I, well, they when just... I got in there, I said stents with question marks. And Louie didn't, I couldn't understand exactly what he was saying. Well, I never heard anything about any stents. I really didn't. I think just the going in and going up and, you know, open, the, open them up better than they was before. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, so she's in love. Still wears the vest? No, they got, she don't have to wear the vest anymore. Really? She don't have to wear the vest anymore. What was the purpose of the vest? I'm not quite for sure, unless it could sense well, you Gina were- Gina told me it was if her heart even started. Huh? Gina told me it would shock her heart if it was- Like a defibrillator? Oh. Yeah, that's oh. what Gina told me. I didn't yeah. know Yeah, I didn't know either. I don't no. think she ever had to have anything I done. Like, I don't think it, anything happened. I thought maybe that. it alerted them for anything, just like her heart great was dropping. Um, yeah. I don't know how she knew that. I don't know how she, she knew that either. So bad. Well, she they just, can tell that on your blood pressure machine too. Yeah, well she- uh, Or that she, thing they put on your finger. Yeah, I, I don't know, but all of a sudden she just knew things weren't right. Yeah. You know, and she called Tina and Tina said, go to the hospital, uh -huh. you know? <laughs> Is she so home she, now? Huh? Is she home now? Yeah, yeah, oh. she got to come home yesterday, I think. She got, to, after they did that, I think they did that on maybe the third day. And she thought she'd go home. They said, no, he was going to take the vest off, but she had to stay one more, yeah. one more night. And then she got to go home yesterday, I'm pretty sure. Hey, when somebody's as bad as Ann, you never know how to think. And also, you know how they was always saying just that her heart was just- uh, 15% or something. 15 or something like that or more, but no, it's, it's up to about 29, 30. Wow. It helped her heart. Oh. It helped her heart a lot to be beating better. It did. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's already making plans of doing this and doing that. <laughs> she said they might come to Earl Park, but she she's always interested in going to a grandchild's ball game. Oh, okay. So there's some ball game come up she wants to go to, so I'm not afraid <laughs> she gets to do that, you know. But yeah, we just need to thank the Lord for, for Ann and, you know, things. Where's your grandchild today? Uh, with their mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, let's see if there's anybody else. Well, I was so glad that Louie got to come yesterday, but you know, he's still weak, so. Yeah, he, he usually stays to the end, though. Yeah, he, <clears throat> he got to about, he got to, to, to go home, you know. He was just tired. He was just tired, so keep Louie in your prayers. Because really, you know, uh, it's just, I guess, gonna take time, because there's no, there's no meds, they give you no meds or anything. Mm -hmm. So you just it's uh, just that the COVID affects some people like that. Oh, yeah. It drags on and on and yeah. on, and it takes them forever to get over. Andy it. Smith is still dragging on. Is she? She's worse than Louie. Really? Who is it? Sandy. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. And she has all those other problems. Yeah. RA and lupus and. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. pray for Sandy, yeah, too. Yeah, pray for Sandy. Yeah. We'd love to see Sandy back in church with us. She would have enjoyed yesterday. Huh? She would have enjoyed she yesterday. She would have. Yeah, she felt like it. Yeah. <clears throat> How's the, uh, Roger Jackson? He was doing pretty good. He was was he great? I'm hoping to get to go up and see him this next week. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. How many of you heard the COVID song yesterday? Oh. That man that played the banjo, he had wrote a song about COVID. 
Uh -huh. And he sang it. It was funny. It was it was cute. I heard he say he was going to say the song that he wrote. Did he say it? I didn't hear. Yeah. yeah. You know, I heard a lot of people were busy visiting and they missed yeah. it. Yeah. I missed it. I, I missed it. Janice needs our prayers too. Who? Janice. Yeah. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, well, we I saw her too uh, Friday when on my way home from uh, down to Greenwood. And uh, she was hoping to come today. She knew she wasn't going to come yesterday. But, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she would have enjoyed yesterday. And, and and Bonnie and Tom, I said I knew Tom knew about it because he'd been to church, but you know they were here, yeah. and I know they probably would have liked it. Let's keep Bonnie. It was good to see Bobby yesterday. Didn't he yeah. look so good? Yeah, I thought he looked just wonderful. I did too. Yeah. I got to talk to him because he was here from the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah, my lady was sitting here when I got here. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you know, it was. Robbie a, bring him. I guess Robbie brought him because no, he, he drove. He drove, he drove himself. himself. He drove himself. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. What, was Linda here? Robbie's Linda? No. no. I, I noticed Rob coming in later, but I thought, well, maybe he was doing something out in the crowd or, or you know, or. Yeah. I thought he brought his dad, but he didn't. No. Yeah. Boy, boy, Bob's really getting strong. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> well, he didn't have the keys to his car, and it was at Robbie's. Uh -huh. <laughs> Robbie told him, said, you walk over and get him. Really? And he did? walked over and got him. <laughs> <laughs> he probably thought he wouldn't do it. <laughs> he meant to be here, didn't he? <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Let's look, look again. We don't want to leave nobody out. Hmm. And Rob was cooking hot dogs with Louie when I got here. Yeah, and, and Bruce helped too. Yeah. Bruce said, oh yeah. We have quite a bit of help, but I'm so glad of that. Yeah. Um, Linda, is Tildy and John still gone? No, they're home. Yeah. Getting ready for the next trip? Well, I don't think John really wants to. She hasn't decided yet. Not after that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I want to. No. <laughs> Let's keep up. Uh, Irene's daughter, uh, Ronnie. Keep Ronnie in our prayers. Rose, what's her last name? Dua. D. It's right on there. Oh, is it on there? That's the last one. Oh, D U W A. I just wonder. And Irene, too, because she's not very well. Okay. And I know she tries to help her daughter. I did have, I, oh, there's Irene. Yeah, she's not. Okay, there. is there any others that I'm overlooking? Is Irene, has she recovered from her heart attack? Mm, not really, no. She just pushes herself because of Ronnie. Mm -hmm. What about Bob Toddlers? Is he doing okay? Anybody um, talk with him? He has problems getting around sometimes. He falls. Does he? That's, that's awful. Be by yourself and fall. Bill needs prayers for that because he's having a getting where he's having a real hard time getting up and walking. His leg gives out. It just gives he out. Really? Falls forward and I have to hold him up and it's hard to hold him up. And well, does he use the walker? Yeah, he uses the walker, but you can only take it so many places. That, and then he has to use his hands on the washer and dryer or mm -hmm. on the desk. Yeah. Whatever you can grab a hold of, huh? I don't know if there's you... any, I've never thought of having some kind of a belt you could put on so you could hold on to him. Yeah, but he'd have to wear it to bed because he gets up every two hours. Does he really? That's well, hard. I have to get up with him. Yeah. A gate belt isn't hard to put on, it only takes a minute. Yeah, but... Just so, it's just something goes around your waist, you could just kind of guide him a little Ronnie bit. Ronnie got so he wouldn't let me put it on him, and then, then he fell. I couldn't hold him. I, uh -huh. You know, all I could grab was his t-shirt, and yeah. he still fell sideways and broke his arm right oh, straight my. up and down. 
Yeah. But it was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what it is. It's my fault. <laughs> Don't blame somebody. <laughs> yeah. If there's no others, let's take these to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for each one that's coming to your house, Lord, to worship you. Bless them. And Lord, we're just so thankful for yesterday, for the everyone that came out to to enjoy the fellowship and the food and the music. I pray each one went home with a blessing, Lord. Thank you. And Lord, we wanna pray for Rodney and, and Teresa. Rodney's uh, getting over his surgery and Teresa's probably still working on getting over her surgery, Lord. So just be with that couple. And Lord, I just pray that they could get well enough and they could come back to church. Thank you. And we pray for the success of Anne's uh, a little surgery they done where they just go in, Lord. Oh, Lord, we're just so thankful for that. Just sounds like sh that things are going to be better now. Bless Anne, Lord, and John. Thank you. And we pray for Louie, Lord. We pray that he could just get stronger each day. And he has, Lord, and we're so thankful for that. He's able to mow and do different things. He just can't push it. So, Lord... Just touch Louie and let him get his strength back. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for Sandy too, Lord. She's went on so long, being so weak. Touch Sandy, Lord, and give her, give her her strength back. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for Roger Jackson and, and his recovery. And we just pray, Lord, that each day he'll get stronger. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for Janice. We miss her so, Lord, when she's not here in church with us. And we just pray for her health, Lord. You know you know the problems. You know what she, what she faces every day, Lord. So just be with Janice and touch her, Lord. And we pray for uh, Tom and, and, and Bonnie. And we just know there's lots of days, Lord, that Bonnie could probably hardly do anything. And we're just so thankful, Lord, for the good days, for the days that she can't get out and go with uh, Tom. Lord, I pray she knows that we love her and that we miss her and Tom both. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we pray for Ronnie Dua and uh, and our mom, Irene. They live a life that, Lord, that they're, they're just not well. There's just so much wrong. And, and they just don't know what's, what's facing them, Lord. So, Lord, I pray you just uh, give them confidence, Lord, that you're there for them and that things can be better. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we pray for, for Bob Tonners out there in, the, in his home. And he falls, Lord, just like Bill Saloni. Lord, we just pray for both these men. We pray for strength, and we pray, Lord, that they can... Uh, uh, learn to use equipment and learn to hold on. Touch them, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we just pray for our pastor today. We pray for the message, Lord. We pray we can listen to it, Lord, and we can learn from it. So be with Dan today as he brings a message to us. We ask all this in thy precious name. Amen. I have a dig deep this morning. I ran through most of my. <laughs> we don't mind a repeat. No. <laughs> no, we don't mind. <laughs> uh, I knock off that. Alan Jackson list. Did you listen to it? Yeah, I listened to it. Yeah. A lot of good stuff on there. I got a lot of start finding printouts and stuff. Okay, this one is 428 in the green book. 
Father, we thank you for this day and this time. We thank you for your word. We just ask that you would open our hearts and minds, Father, as we as we look to your scripture, that you would help us to grow and to learn. We just ask you to penetrate our hearts with your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, this will kind of go along with your call to worship and with the book you're reading. Another one going along kind of what we did last week. Um, we did the parable of the weeds, and it shows where the righteous and the sinful will be separated. The lawbreakers will be separated. The parable where, of the net, where the good fish are kept and the bad fish are thrown out. And these will be thrown out into the area where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So with that, jumping into Luke this week rather than in Matthew, I'm going to touch on Lazarus and the rich man. So um, this one's a bit longer than the other parables that we've touched on. Um, so if you've got snacks, <laughs> um, go ahead and get those out. Um, so this one's broken up into three, three sections. Um, and we're going to see the relationship between these two men. We'll see the relationship of them in life, in death, and in eternity. And I'll just read through the parable itself, and then go back, go back through it. Okay, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. And even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, there was torment and he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus at his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things while Lazarus received bad things. Now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us is a great chasm that has been fixed, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. And he answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. And Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, father, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. So this is the only parable that Jesus gives that actually has a name, that has a person with a name in it. Um, a lot of teachings on this believe that this is an actual occurrence, that the, Jesus is just telling a story of something that has actually happened with giving Lazarus a name. Others say that Lazarus has a name and he just calls him the rich man because in hell you don't need a name. And in heaven, everyone will have a name. But whether it's a true occurrence or if it's still just a parable, the point will still come across strongly. So we see the two men in life where the rich man is dressed in fine clothes. And they talk about him coming and going and wearing this fine linen and purple, which for the most part, the people, even the rich people at the time, would wear their best clothes, the purple, the fine linen, um, for special occasions, for parties, wedding feasts, things like this. This man is wearing this on his daily leaving of his house. This is just his normal wear. 
is something that most people couldn't even afford. So from this, we could figure that he is extremely rich. And then he has a very extravagant lifestyle, not wanting for anything. Anything he wants, he can get, he has. <clears throat> Later on, this rich man will mention Lazarus by name. So he knows who he is, but in life, he never, never acknowledges Lazarus. So on the other side of this, Lazarus has the exact opposite. He has nothing. The words and the phrasing of this in, um, in the Greek says that he is beyond poor. All he has is what he has right there laying on the ground. And it says that he was laid by the gate. He was put by the gate. And the Greek word that goes with this is that he's kind of dropped. Like you get close to like, okay, we're, we're close enough, let go. That kind of thing where you're just kind of dropped down there on the side. And he's put by the gate of this rich man's home where people are passing by just so that he can beg. And it says, well, and it talks about the dogs licking his sores. So we know that he has some sort of illness. He has sores all over his body. And this has got to be something debilitating because he has to be put there. He's not getting there by himself. And he doesn't have the strength to even push the dogs away as they're looking, looking at his sores. Now, I know having open sores, <laughs> when I was in the midst of my, at the peak of my shingles, I didn't even want you even looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> so to have a dog actually licking on a sore would just be, I would have been screaming in pain over that. And these aren't, you know, just like your dog's pet that's going to be like licking you. These are dogs that would be wild, running around feral, eating scraps and garbage. And they find him there and he's not moving, so you can just go at all this, you know, at his sores. And it says that Lazarus desired. To have the, the scraps from the rich man's table. Some say crumbs, but it was a tradition or there was a, a way that they ate at this time, especially more for the rich. As you know, they would, you know, we talked about them reclining at a small table, and the, what they would eat was usually breads and different vegetables or fruits, and they would dip these into oil, olive oil, or different dips that they would make. Um, I guess like in India it would be like a curry or type of things like that that you would dip your hands in and you would eat. So you would have this oil and all these different things on your hands. So they would take some of this bread and they would wipe their hands with the bread and throw it on the ground, throw it under the table. So later it was either eaten by dogs or the servants would clean this up and it would be thrown away. So it says that Lazarus desired to have this bread or these crumbs that these people had cleaned their hands with. Just the scraps, which would have been laying on the ground. It says the time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, there was torment and he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. Now earlier on, on the previous chapters, Jesus is talking to us, says a great crowd is there. So the Pharisees are there, the teachers, the scribes were all there. So he has this huge crowd that he's preaching to again. And a lot of the same parables that we touched on in Matthew are in, going on at the same time. There's a couple other ones that Luke records that Matthew doesn't, but there's this huge crowd of people there. And this last statement that he gives them would be shocking to them. Having Lazarus at Abraham's side. And remembering back, as we talked about, the sick people of the time were considered sinners. There was an old class of people that the sick afflicted the poor and those who were uh, the prostitutes and had the immoral lifestyles would be all clumped in as sinners because you're sick, you're poor, you're afflicted, 
because you've done something wrong and this is God's punishment for you in this lifetime. So you, there's no way that you should be in heaven. So they would have related to the rich man. The Pharisees that were there, they would relate to like, well, he's rich. He's got to be blessed. That's why he should be in heaven. But in Luke 16, in, chapter, in verse 14, it says, The Pharisees were lovers of money. Now they both died. The rich man said he was buried. It actually says that he was buried. There was a funeral. With probably with the paid mourners, they would have people that were paid that would wail and cry as they were taking them out. Lazarus said he was carried away by angels. He had no funeral. And there was probably two options for Lazarus at the time. One with him being extremely poor to be put in a potter's field, which would be where a potter would have a plot of land he would go out and he would dig out what he needed of the clay in the land. And as he would dig that out, he would leave holes. When he was done with that particular area, move over and start digging here, they would throw people into those holes. Probably the more likely, likely option for Lazarus is that he would be picked up with the trash and thrown out. They had an area outside the walls of the city where they burned all their trash, their garbage, all the refuse, everything would be thrown out there and burned along with the extremely poor, the people that would die along the side of the streets. There would be a continuous fire there. They would call it Gehenna because there was a constant fire and this was a symbol of hell. So obviously it's gonna stink because you're just burning everything. So Lazarus is at Abraham's side or it says a lot of translations will say he is at Abraham's bosom. He doesn't use the word heaven in this particular passage, but the Jews understood what was going on. Abraham was the father of the faith. And they knew that Abraham was going to be in heaven. So why is Lazarus with him? And this would be very upsetting to the Pharisees that he's they took this beggar, this extremely poor person, took him to heaven while this rich man is in hell. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue because I'm in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things while Lazarus received bad things. Now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us is a great chasm that has been fixed so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. So why does he say send Lazarus? Why not Abraham come get me? Does he still consider himself better than Lazarus? Lazarus was poor. Lazarus was basically in his eyes worthless he never acknowledged him in life now he's saying please send Lazarus send Lazarus is he thinking of him as what would be a servant to come get me to some just give me this one drip of water there's no repentance in hell the Holy Spirit is gone there's no way that we can repent without the power of the Holy Spirit and why not just why one drop of water why not hit me with a bucket? Why not get the whole fire hose out? He wants one drop of water, which tells you how much agony that he is in, that one drip would give him a certain amount of relief. So now the two men have switched places in death and in eternity. And there's no changing that. There is a chasm that is fixed. They cannot cross either way. And just by chance, I came up, there's no change in your position. And just by chance, I came across this teaching this week about the Apocrypha of the, from the Catholic, has the extra, extra books that they have. And they talk about it in that, about praying for those who are in hell, that they could still go to heaven. So they're talking about praying for the dead. This says you can't. There is no changing. Once you die, where you are is where you're going to be. 
Matthew 10 says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but can kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. So with the rich man saying he's not going to get the relief, he's not going to get that drip, that one drop of water. He says, I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house where I have five brothers and let, them, let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. And Abraham replied, they have Moses, they have the prophets, let them listen. So again, he says, send Lazarus. But why is he sending Lazarus? He doesn't want his brothers to be in the same situation that he's in. And if you notice, he's alone. The rich man is alone. It's not a big party. It's so many times we hear, well, with music and all these different things I've heard, I actually heard somebody say, I might as well go to hell, all my friends will be there. Rich, the rich man doesn't even want his brothers to be with him because he knows this is horrible. And he is completely and totally alone. Whatever entertainment, music, you're alone. All good gifts come from the Father. All good gifts come from above. And hell is going to be the complete and total absence of God. Everything that we find pleasurable, everything that we like, everything is gone because God is gone. No common grace in hell. Today, everybody can enjoy the sun. Everybody can enjoy a good meal. Everybody can enjoy the landscape and all the beauty that's out there. This is from God. This is common grace, friendships, family. The lost have these. The sinners have these things. They can enjoy a common grace that is gone. Life, it's gone. Everything is gone. He said they have Moses and the prophets. They had the same thing that everybody else had. They have access to it that everybody else had. No father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. And there's a bit of irony there, being that Jesus raised a man named Lazarus from the dead. <clears throat> and after he was raised, they tried to kill him again to cover up the evidence that Jesus had raised somebody from the dead. They didn't want people knowing or following Jesus, and this is a huge thing. You raise somebody from the dead, that's going to get around a little bit. So they tried to kill Lazarus again so that Jesus wouldn't be followed by the people that knew of him raising him from the dead. And of course, we know Jesus came back from the dead, and the people with the hardened hearts would still not repent. Later in Revelation, I'll talk about even after they're cast into the lake, they'll still curse Jesus, even knowing who he is. After he's revealed himself in all of his glory, they're still going to gnaw on their tongues and curse him. So what do we take away from all of this? <laughs> Not a lot of smiling faces today. <laughs> but hell is real. I, know I don't like talking about it this week because I was reading through this and going through this over and over. It's like, oh, this is so depressing and scary. It is. Even being saved and trusting in Jesus and even reading through this is like non unending torment. My arm was driving me crazy last night. And that's not, that's just this. <laughs> <laughs> it was not everything. And I'm just sitting there, Lord, I don't even, is this like just a little taste to go along with my sermon? So I've got like a, uh, but I can't even imagine that kind of pain and torment. 
that it's real. And Jesus talks about it. He tells us this as a warning. And there will be religious people in hell that have not trusted in Christ. The religious, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the ones that knew the scriptures, the ones who had Moses and the prophets, had it memorized, but still wouldn't let it into their hearts. They knew it. A lot of people know the scripture. That's always one thing that always scares me. It's like, am I just knowing this or am I trusting? You know, it's one of those, my own paranoia and doubt in myself. But they knew the scripture. There will be religious people in hell. It's only those who have repented and accepted the truth of who he is. Another thing is we need to get the gospel out. People need to hear it either in the way we live, the way we talk, the way whatever we do, we have to live as an example of what they're going to get without knowing the gospel, with rejecting it or having the hardened hearts to pray for the lost, to have that broken heart for those who don't know, which is hard sometimes because when you have people with hardened heart or you have people like this rich man who just I don't need anything. I don't care about anything. I've got myself, I've got my money, I've got what I want. I don't care beyond that. But they have broken hearts for those basically are living in the true ignorance of what the gospel says and what the scripture is. To have that broken heart and to know that this is truth, whether this is, as some say, an actual occurrence or Jesus just getting the point across in a parable, it doesn't matter. It's truth. And he's putting it out there for these religious people so that they would see the way things truly are. Just because you have a lot in this life doesn't mean that you're blessed in the one to come. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the salvation that you give us through Christ Jesus. We thank you that you've given us the opportunity to be saved. That we all deserve the torment, the fire, the hell. But it's because of what Jesus has done for us that we can be with you in heaven. We can be with you in eternity. Pray, Father, that you would help us to get the word of Jesus out to those that are around us. To live a life that is an example and a representation of our Savior. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> So, if anybody's in this position, I'd rather be with Abraham. I'd like to speak or I'd come forward at any time to bring this on. And stand and turn to Christ 17. <laughs>